everyone, my name is Eileen Hull and I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how to assemble this uh, die from Sizzix. It's called the Book Box. It's a scoreboards die, which means it is designed to cut thick materials like mat board, chipboard, leather, fabric, fleece, you know, heavy duty items. So a couple of the options that you can use are um, mat board. This is made by Sizzix and it is nice because it uh, fits right through the big shot. This is mixed media board. You can use that too and that's like a chipboard and mat board combination. Uh, another thing that you're going to need is a set of the extended cutting pads. This will help you when you're running it through because you can see the length of the die. It's long so you will want these extend cutting pads. All right, so something else that you're going to need is adhesive. If you want to cover your book or box, because you can make either of those items, and I'll show you in a minute some samples, since this is a heavy-duty material that you're working with, you're going to want heavy-duty adhesive, and so that's why I recommend this. That is what I use. You can use hot glue, which sometimes I don't like because it adds bulk to your project, but it will work. Also, you can use uh, glue, whatever you're comfortable with, but I'm just showing you what I use. <laughs> okay, so this is the die that you're going to want. This is the die, and here's what it looks like, and let's go over the parts to it. This here is the cover, so you're going to need two of those, whether you're making a book or a box. This here is the spine, and you can see that there are score lines built in here, and these are the things that really make this die unique because there are scoring blades inside here that uh, when you cut it, you're going to see they have these lines so you know exactly where to fold to get the result that you want. These pieces here are your sides that build up the box. So here is one that I've put together. I'm not doing anything fancy for this video. It's just to show you how to put it together. So this is what it looks like. Um, it measures, let's see, it is five by six and, oh, six and three eighths. So what I am happy about <laughs> is I've been trying to design a box that will hold a2 cards and envelopes and this does that so you can also use it to create a book in fact there are lots of ways that you can use this die and you'll be seeing them if you want to watch my uh videos i do facebook live videos on tuesdays at six o'clock eastern and thursdays at four o'clock eastern so come on over and see uh what i'm working on and as you can see, uh, I don't think we have any cards in here, but we can fit the envelope, so the cards will go right there. So this uh, is, I'm just going to show you a couple samples of what you can make with this book. So you can use your mixed media paints on here. I think this was the jelly plate. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. Th these are samples from my team who are amazing. I'm not exactly sure that it looked like that was a combination. Here's one that I made and I like to store, and here's one with my little A2 card in here. So you can see how it goes together. You can cover it with uh, paper, and this one is chipboard that's covered with paper. Um, this one here is cut from vinyl, and it's also a box that you can hold photos in. These are four by six photos. You can make different things. This is a little sewing case, needle box, and this is covered with some real pretty flowers. And you can decorate this in any style, and that's the fun part about it. Here's another one. So these are some of my new rubber stamps, kind of a mixed media um, style. And here are, is another card. And again, some more of my stamps. And Pam on my team made this little uh, stationery set, which is adorable and would make a great gift. So you can see that it can be decorated in any style. Here's another idea, and this one was made by Tanya, and she oriented it in a different direction. So she cut down her uh, binding piece and made it so that it opened in this way. So again, lots of options and Oh, it's just so much fun. Here is one that I created 
to be used as a book. And I just had an old cookbook, so I started doing this. I'm not done yet, but I put some of my favorite recipes, adhered them to the cover, found this cute paper, and then I strung it so that um, you can make little insert books and add your own recipes or photos or anything you like inside. So again, this can be decorated up. You can also use your accessory dies or embossing folders to go inside the book or to decorate the outside of the book. And this is uh, one of the dies in the collection that uh, is actually like this project that I made for the cover. I use this die and so that will fit on the front too. This one is called the uh, snail mail die. These are other ones. Now this is a Christmas wreath, but it doesn't have to be. It's just um, a wreath shape and you can add little flowers in here or whatever you like. You can cut the bird in a blue and make it into a springtime project. This is the waterfall and tags die, and you can use those inside, especially if you make it into a book. And here are two mandala dies that you can use to decorate the outside of the book or box, whatever it is that you wanna make. So let's go ahead and just put one together so you can see how it works, okay? Here's our sample right here. Like I said, I cut two covers. That one I messed up and, and have tape on here because I put the tape on the wrong side. So, oh well. <laughs> you know, you do a couple and you figure it out. So I have already pre-cut them because I'm sure you know how to die cut these. And I thought it would just make it easier if I had everything pre-taped and ready to go. So after you cut your pieces, like I said, you want two covers. You want one spine, two of these shorter pieces, and two of the longer pieces, and that's going to make your little frame inside your box here. Now, if you just want to make a book, all you need is the spine and two covers, and that goes together really quickly. If you wanted to add paper or fabric on top, I would do that first and then cut just so that everything is all ready to go. It's nice and clean and... Uh, you don't have to try to match things up after. Okay, so like I said, I already added my adhesive. So I've got my little shape. So let's make our box first, okay? So we have, like I said, two of these and the shorter ones, two of the longer ones. And we have our spine. So what I'm gonna do is peel off my adhesive first. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do my sides. I like to do the sides first and form the box and then go around and remove the bottom part. And then if you really want to make sure you're going to do this right, you can kind of line them up and say, okay, I want a short and a long and a short and a long. And also I should have said that before you go to put this together, you're gonna wanna take each piece and bend it all the way over on um, all the score lines, okay? And what that's gonna do is break the fibers so that uh, you it will make it easier for you to, um, you know, get a good fold. All right, so I've got short, long, I'm gonna do short, and another long and then we're going to put it together just make sure that all of these top lines are smooth and together because that's going to matter when you put your box together okay now we're just going to do our last one line it up okay so now we've got the base to our box here and we're going to remove the rest of your adhesive And the next step is probably the hardest thing of the whole box, which is to figure out where you wanna line it up on the bottom of the box. So what I do is don't press down too heavily or hard, get it where you want it first and then press when you're sure you have it locked in to where you want it to fold. If you can get your adhesive off. You want strong adhesive, but not so strong you can't get it apart. There we go. Okay, so 
Um, actually, let's do this other part first because this kind of helps us know where everything is gonna line up, okay? Now you're gonna see on this spine here, I have adhered tape so that I'm gonna put this front piece on the top here, and then I've turned it over and put tape going down the inside so it sits like that. And the reason that I do that is so that I've got a flat piece to adhere my bottom um, you know, well in here. If I put my piece here, there's gonna be a little raised area, which is not a big deal, but you know, it's just easier to do it that way, okay? And there is a little bit of a bow here because I fold it over on all of the score lines. You don't have to, but I do, just because I kind of like how that looks. To me, it looks more like a book. So let's go ahead and put this together. Now, again, if you had added paper, you know, you'd want to figure out which direction your paper, uh, where you want your, you know, pattern on the front or the back. And then you're just gonna lay that right in that fold there and line this up and press that down, okay? So you've got your back cover. And now you're gonna add your front. And again, line up, you know, figure out where, which direction it's going. If you have text or something, just make sure it's going the right way. All right, and then you're gonna do the same thing uh, line this up and it's nice to see I've got a little mess up there so I'm gonna flip that around so that goes on the inside and you're just gonna press that down okay now you've got your cover shape okay now you're gonna add this piece here okay so you can butt that all the way over to the edge if you want or you can center it, it's however you wanna do it. So I think it's easier if I do it like that. And you know, if you can stand directly above it, it just gives you a little more uh, help in seeing where it is oriented, but I think that's pretty good. So let's see. And just, you know, do a little test and that looks fine to me. So. Um, if you want to bring it all the way over to the edge, you can do that too. And then you can kind of lay it in there and just, uh, you know, set it in like that. So it's all up to you. I'm going to give it a little bit of room and just, I should have left it how it was, I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, well. It's a little tricky to get it even especially when you can't see the top. See, that's too much. Okay. That looks pretty good. And then you're just gonna press. Press around the edge here and just make sure this is all even. If you want, you can take a piece of paper, cut to size, and stick that in the bottom so that you don't see these tabs, however you want to do it. I think I have a little piece of tape here. but So that is how you make your book box, and you can see that it went pretty quickly. I think it went together really nicely. You can add a closure, um, either like a piece of Velcro right here that you kind of wrap around and then have another piece here. You could use magnets to close it. You could punch a hole here, punch a hole here, tie a ribbon together. So, or you can just leave it plain without a closure, okay? And then let's just quickly go over how to make a book. And basically it's the same as what you just did, but let's make a smaller one because if you wanna make a book, you have a couple options here. You can fold it down the middle here and leave these flat, which I think I'm gonna do because I just wanna make a small book. Um, so I'm going to fold on these two inner score lines. If I wanted to make a larger book, I would fold on these outer lines. So let me do that. What The way I do it is I lay it on the edge of the table and use that to make my creases because you want to make sure that you have an even fold. Matte board is made up of layers of paper, and if you apply uneven pressure, you're going to pull up 
on one side and it will peel away. So you don't want to do that. So again, you have the option of putting your cover on the outside or you can put it on the inside. If you think maybe that looks more like a book, you can do that. You can decorate the spine. You can make this out of different materials. Uh, this is great if you make it out of something called texture roll. I like to use this because it is very flexible and it doesn't ever degrade like paper will. It's uh, kind of a cool material. I'm not sure what it is, but, <laughs> but I really like it for using it uh, if I'm making hinges or latches or something that, you know, bindings where I know that the book is going to be opened over and over and, um, you know, this is not going to break down. So, it also comes in a bunch of pretty colors and also metallic. So Sizzix has that too. So all I would do is take my adhesive and, you know, you could use a thicker adhesive for this and just put your tape on here or on the inside, depending on where you want your cover to uh, lay and then put your book together. And what I would do is um, like this one here, I took my crocodile and I just punched a couple notches in the top with the larger hole. And then I took elastic and strung it into my book and made signatures out of paper, you know, and then you can just take them in and out. Uh, this is some of Sizzix's paper and just some drawing paper that I have. So you would just wrap the elastic around, tie a knot, slip it into these little notches, and then slide that in there. And the reason I like this is because, say you want to, you know, change your recipes or reposition them, you know, who knows how, whatever it is you want to add more, you're able to do that in this Traveler's Notebook style so another thing that you can do is you can use these little photo sleeves. Um, I, I like to use them either for my photos or for um, keep storing my artwork or little things that I want to add to my books, but I don't want them to get lost, you know. So I added three of those into this book uh, in the same way. I didn't punch the little holes, but you could. Um, you could also poke holes and you could string your elastic through the holes. So however you want to do it. And it's fun because this material is so easy to um, try different techniques on. The mat board will just accept anything. This is decoupage, but you can paint on it. You can letter on it. Um, stencil, you can add paste, textures, material, all kinds of different things. It's just a blank canvas. You can see this fun little box. It could be anything. You know, you could store things and, you know, label them on the side, set them in your bookcase. You could store dyes or um, ephemera, whatever you like in there. So it's really a very versatile die, and I hope you'll give it a try. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Just set them in the comments below. If you're interested in seeing more projects like this, I'd invite you to my Eileen Hall Designs Facebook page. Um, and well, I do videos twice a week, like I said. You can visit me on my uh, YouTube page. I have more videos. Um, I have the Eileen Hall Fan Club where we share ideas and inspiration uh, and friendship. So you're invited to come there too and join the Eileen Hall Fan Club Facebook group. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. See you soon. Bye.